Verizon out with second quarter earnings. Earnings per share coming in at $1.23 adjusted. Joining me now is Hans Vesberg, Chairman and CEO of Verizon. And Hans, it's great to be with you. Thank you. Great to be here. So what were the highlights in your view from this quarter? I did notice continued strength in wireless service revenue. I think you're right. We had a very good quarter when it comes to our wireless business. We added 245,000 net additions on the phone side, uh, which is uh, much longer than the first quarter and even year over year we're growing. Uh, so that's good. Again, very low churn uh, in the business, and all that uh, made us also have a very good result. We had 1.23 earnings per share, which was also an increase from sequentially and, uh, and even year over year. So I think we showed that we, in all the changes we're doing, we're actually being very focused on delivering our result and executing well. So uh, it was a good quarter for us financially. Capital spending stands at between 17 and 18 billion dollars for 2019. Is the bulk of that money going into the 5G investment? I think you need to see it as a much more holistic. When 5G can sometimes be believed that it is radio access, but of course the fiber that we're building is a big portion as well, and the whole network that is from the data center up to the access. But a lot of it is, of course, uh, being sort of a 5G driven. But we also do a lot of investment in 4G still, and also transforming our copper network. So we are. We have plenty of places that we're transforming in order to have the continue to have the state of the art technology and network. Well, and another highlight of the second quarter was, of course, the rollout of the wireless 5G network in various cities for yeah. your customers. And just this week, you added even more cities. What have you learned from this rollout? I think that when you start with the first uh, market, you need to tune the network. And people might not understand, it's, it's a very complex software, all the way from the radio, the chipset in the handset, and then, of course, the antennas and everything need to work in order to get <clears throat> the best performance. So when you do one city, uh, then sort of you can start replicating. And now we're up to nine cities. Uh, we are actually we have launched with all our vendors. Uh, that means that we can get scale right now because all our vendors are not tuned with the chipset and the four handsets or the 5G devices that we have. So uh, clearly, we are now up to nine cities, and <clears throat> our goal this year is to do plus 30 markets, which we are progressing well with. Looking out into the future, when do you see everyone having access to 5G? And talk about the benefits of 5G. I, I want to know as a Verizon <laughs> customer myself. Now, you, you, right now, we are very focused on building 5G in the most dense populated areas because that's such a huge difference when you get 5G there because we're talking about right now the phones we're out in the market, they're doing 2 gigabits per second. I mean, maybe on the 4G phone you're doing 40 megabits. It's just a huge difference. It's just so transformative. And that's what we want to give our customers. So we will continue with the cities and densification. Then later on, we will also do coverage so everyone can have 5G. But different spectrum will give different performance on 5G. And in our case, we want to build something that is really transformative for our customers that really feel that this is a difference. And uh, you need to think about that 5D have so much more to give than 4D. 4D is throughput and speed. And in, in 5D, it's eight different capabilities, everything from low latency, battery lifetime, uh, simultaneous connected devices. And all of that is also, of course, addressing the industries and enterprises. Sometimes we end up talking about that 5G is the sort of a smartphone, but it's so much more. And that's what we are working with. We also want to talk about content because that plays a role in 5G. Verizon owns several media brands through Verizon Media Group. Of course, Yahoo Finance is included in that. How important is Verizon-owned content to your 5G strategy? I think that <clears throat> what we have done with the Verizon Media Group is really been focused on over the top uh, solutions like Yahoo Sports, Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Entertainment, etc. That's where I think we can be because ultimately we want to be in, in the next generation content. When it comes to linear content and all of that, we bundle and in this uh, quarter we we announced our deal with YouTube TV that is now in the market. And they have a great product. We have a great network. And that's how we go about, go about that market. But when it comes to Verizon Media Group, I think we have found a good model how we are monetizing them. And they are part of the overall Verizon strategy. You mentioned the 5G smartphones earlier. I wanted to follow up on that. Where are we in terms of getting 5G devices ready? We know Verizon offers several already. Yeah. But any word on when Apple will be ready. They just settled their Qualcomm dispute. That's got to be a big endorsement of 5G. I think first of all, we have four devices out. We have three smartphones and one MiFi in Seagull that we just uh, launched. 
Uh, when we look into next year, basically all phones, smartphones that we're going to launch is going to be 5G enabled. Uh, when it comes to Apple, I think they need to answer that question. But we're going to see a lot of uh, phones coming out way before that in the market. And as we are building the network, uh, that benefit will be there. And some of the five or all of the 5G phones that we have today in the range, they are also great 4G phones. So ultimately, you want an experience for your customers. You, they want the best network wherever they are. They want to enjoy uh, the technology and, and doing new things. That's the most important. And given all the benefits to 5G that we've been talking about, I would think consumers would be willing to pay more for that. Do you think 5G will increase prices for consumers? I think that how we have seen, how we have been working is that you, you, we have our unlimited plans and we, we think those are a great way to be simple to our customers. Then you can decide how much data you want or how much uh, speed and throughput you want. And I think that's how we will define when you get full uh, sort of 5G or getting a 4G network uh, usage. And I think that's how Ronan, which is leading our Verizon consumer uh, business, actually is thinking to give the best to the customers. And they have a chance to mix and match what is best for them and their family. Some might want to have a lot of throughput and speed in the family, 5G, and some other is, is a 4G. Could be a kid in the family having one plan. So I think we want to make it simple for our customers and have choices. And then some can choose a super 5G and some others choosing something different. Let's talk a little bit about the industry because we know 5G is at the center of the proposed T-Mobile Sprint deal, which was just approved by the Department of Justice. It still faces an antitrust lawsuit, but a condition of the deal is for various wireless assets to be sold to DISH. We know DISH is committed to 5G. What's your reaction to DISH as a possible competitor here? First of all, I think that uh, this, this is a new uh, new industry structure because we have uh, one merger coming up and and then Dish, of course, then uh, being a, a new player, uh, given that they passed the last hurdles here. Uh, so I think that for us, I think that we don't change the strategy. We decided our strategy one year ago. We're executing on that. We have our Verizon consumer group, business group, and media group that is running on top of our network, which we think is a super asset. Uh, we will continue to execute on that, and 5G is coming. Um, they will, of course, compete. But on the other hand, you need to think about it, and you said it yourself. I mean, we're spending around 17 to 18 billion US dollars on the network every year, and has done that consecutive years. Uh, at the same time, I believe that we have the best engineers in the industry. Uh, at this, so if they're going to catch us up, they need to do a, quite a lot to do it. And we believe that uh, quality networks is super important, especially going to, into 5G. So we will just continue to execute on the strategy we have. But of course, it's a new industry stru structure we see in front of us. Are you confident the U.S. will win the 5G race, say, in com com competition to China, for example? So I'm not sure we have a competition with China, uh, uh, but, but I I'm, know I'm that we were first in the world, so uh, in the U.S. So, so that, that uh, I think, is important. But uh, one needs to remember also that uh, historically, uh, on all these Gs, 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G, all of them are using the same standard. And that also brings down the cost for everyone in the world. So sometimes you can debate if it's important to be, uh, who is leading or not. But uh, uh, so far, U.S. is leading, and, and uh, we're proud of being part of that with our 5G home and our 5G mobility for smartphones uh, as iconic launches. Uh, but uh, I don't compete with China from that point of view. But it's important that, of course, we have uh, in this market technology and 5G competence and all of that. And I think we have uh, unparalleled competence and, and people in this market. Hans, one year ago today, you started as CEO of Verizon. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> what surprised you most about this past year? And, and where do you see the company going over the next several years? Where would you like to see it? So what, what surprised me most, I think... First of all, we, we decided to do quite a lot of, of changes, all the way from the network, the go-to-market, the branding. Uh, we had a large transformation when it comes to our employees with a voluntary program. What surprised me most is that with all those changes, we have actually continued to deliver fantastic results, both in the first quarter and the second quarter. And many, many people around us was worried that we're doing too much changes. I'm not sure I'm surprised, but I just want to say that I'm extremely proud of the team, how they have been executing in these times. And we look at the second quarter results, and we actually had in the voluntary program almost 10,400 people that decided to leave us. Uh, so, of course, in all that uh, taken into account and new structure, new leadership team, uh, new network setup, 
uh, we're delivering a good result. I think uh, it's a huge praise of the team and uh, the whole company uh, with the DNA we have in it. All right, Hans, anything else you wanted to add? No, I think it's a, it's a good day. We, we put the second quarter behind us. Uh, we continue to work hard, and I think that we are preparing ourselves to continue to be leading this marketplace. All right, Hans, thank you so much for your time, and congrats on a good quarter. Thank you very much.